So how do we apply the evidence gained from the science of reading into the classroom? Honestly, that's been one of the difficulties is it feels like we've got this body of evidence that's great, but then how do I apply that into my classroom? I wanna talk about five ways to help us bridge that gap and start to take this evidence and make it feel like we can apply that effectively into our classroom. And step one really is find resources that are doing that, that are trying to help bridge that gap. One of the main ones is the Reading League. Um, started by Louisa Motes and David Kilpatrick. They have a reading league journal that's fantastic, that's taking that evidence and helping us bridge that information into the classroom. Second, take it one step at a time. That's the thing that I, I know for myself shuts me down. When I look at all the things I need to be doing in my classroom and I get overwhelmed, I just immediately shut down. And so it's about taking it one step at a time adding one new element, bringing in some of those principles that we need to be using in our instruction, making sure that we're um, being diagnostic about what we're doing, that our instruction is data-driven. Whatever that is, focus on one thing, bring that in and add those in slowly. Third, well, really this one, there's two ways that we can do this. Once we know what we should be teaching, we have two options. We can read all the evidence, um, look at all that data and create our instruction around that, basically create our own program or approach. Or we can use evidence-based programs that are aligned to the science of reading to help provide the structure and resources to do that. That is one of the things we at Reading Horizons are doing is creating that, that's what we do. We are structured literacy and we create that framework and those resources for you to be able to implement in the classroom, that structured literacy approach based on the science of reading that is so important for our students. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So there's really two options there. You can create that based on what you learn, um, or you can use an evidence-based program that is doing that as well, so that you have those resources and support as you start to implement. Fourth, find a support system in your implementation of the science of reading. So a lot of groups, whether those are community groups, um, social groups, where you can connect um, like Decoding Dyslexia or International Dyslexia Association or the Reading League or for Reading Horizons, we have one called the Teachers League um, on social media and on our own community page where you can connect with other educators and talk through this. You know, how is that going? What's your struggles? What's your challenges? What's your um, amazing successes? What does that look like to keep us motivated as we work to do this for our students? And finally, stay open and flexible. When we have this new information coming in, being willing to change and adapt, just like we wouldn't want our surgeon doing the same surgery that he or she did 30 years ago, um, we want our professionals to be able to take in that new information and change and be flexible. And that is part of that growth that we need, especially in education, to be able to, as that new evidence comes out, that supporting evidence, that helps us get clearer and clearer on what students need to be successful readers, that we are willing to take that information, get the support systems and resources in place, and apply that in our classrooms.